Today we're going to be installing an open road 13,000 pound winch onto this sweet ass third gen Tacoma from Tacoma Powered. Today we are installing a winch from Open Road. We're installing the Heat Series 1 13,000 pound winch. This winch is actually very similar to the Badlands winches, except for one major factor, and that is the IP rating. Where Badlands winches are IP66, this one is IP67, which means that it can be submerged up to a meter of water for 30 minutes before there was some sort of failure, which I think is pretty rad because this means that if you have this on the front of your vehicle, you can do river crossings and you really don't have to worry about it. This winch has a six horsepower motor with a three stage planetary gear system, which has a gear reduction ratio of 265 to one. Another interesting feature about this winch is that it can draw a current upwards of 415 amps. And we have a very good solution for that later in the video. So make sure that you keep your eyes open. All right, now that we have the bumper off, we're gonna put the winch into place and we're gonna see if we can put the module on the top if there's gonna be enough room for underneath the grill. That's gonna be our next real test. But now, for right now, we gotta get this boy onto that boy. Ta-da! One of the first steps when setting up your winch is to correctly route the line underneath the drum of the winch and out the front of the bumper. Set this up first so that you don't have to fiddle and push that line around after you have mounted it and cranked it tight down to the bumper. So you see how each of these posts here are color coded. There's a red ring on this one. You can't really see it because of the body, but you can see the black ring on this one. And then you can see the red one and the yellow one. The black is going to be your ground, yellow is your control, and red is your power, your main power. So um, that's going to go hook up to these guys. Exactly. Even though Open Road was gracious enough to supply us with the proper hardware and mounting solutions to put the control box on the top of the winch, it didn't really work in our application. So we actually fabbed up a solution by using the bracket that they provided and a little bit of DOM tubing, and we welded it onto the side of the bumper and we made an excellent mounting position for the control box. A hole in these. Now there is. <laughs> you just burned that in right now. No, I didn't, did it? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. It was smoking. <laughs> I like my fingers are getting hot. <laughs> yeah, it should be good. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's oh, right yeah. there. It's right there. This is the look you get now. It's the G spot. <laughs> oh, it's right there. G spot. <laughs> Where's the tool? Right here. You dropped it. I picked it up for you. That'll work out for you. It's actually Jimmy <laughs> Once the bracket was fabbed up, we could mount the control box to it. Then we could run the lines from the control box to the winch in the correct color locations. Now that all that is completed, we can actually mount the bumper back up to the truck and start running all the wires. So anytime you're setting up a winch, there's a lots of different ways to do it. This is my favorite way, is by getting a 350 amp solenoid. You can get these from Warren, um, or you can find them a lot of different places. Amazon has them. Um, but what these do is they're essentially a really big relay. So you have your power from your winch coming into one side terminal, and then you have the power going from the other side terminal out to your battery terminal. And then you have these two guys, which are the control for the relay. So they'll trigger everything to connect together, and these run to a switch in your cab. And what this does is it makes sure that when you're not using your winch, there is no power going to your winch. Um, so usually if you want to fuse a winch, you're going to fuse it, and you're going to gimp your winch, because winches will pull more amperage than your fuse can handle. And so, um, or if your fuse is actually rated for your winch, a short is going to be less pull than what the fuse is. So if you didn't really do anything. 
So running a solenoid, a big solenoid, is going to make it so that you can shut off power all the time when you're not using your winch and only have the power running to your winch when you want to use it. Ta-da! When installing a winch, you want to use some of the largest wire that you possibly can. In our case, we ended up grabbing some jumper cables off of Amazon that were two gauge wire. And we found that getting a long set of jumper cables that has the thick wire is actually cheaper and more cost effective than going and buying some extra wire from the auto parts store. So what are you doing, Tyler? Um, we're putting on this guy. not touching the battery terminal yet onto the solenoid solenoid is mounted um, the winch power is connected to the solenoid and um, uh, a good question about these that was brought up is that these are not in and out you can do it on either way all the solenoid does is it connects the power and closes the circuit between these two posts so you can have power going on this one and winch on this one or power on this one winch on that one either way it doesn't matter if you want to, what we can do is zip tie it there just so it's not rubbing on your vacuum hose because it'll go through the vacuum hose before it'll go through the sheath. Um, so we can zip tie it there or we can pull it down here and zip tie it to one of your brake lines. Yeah, just um, push it down Just so that it's there. clearing your box here and, yeah. and it'll probably stay right there. With that. Yeah. Look at that, perfect. Woohoo! <laughs> So the, we actually wired it a little incorrect, so I'm just going to clarify how, how to wire this guy up. So um, from the control box, there's four wires coming out. There's the yellow, red, and black, and then there's the little thin control wire. So we did hook those up to these three terminals here on the top, and we connected the little black control wire to the ground. What That was a mistake. You actually hook it down here to the bottom one, which is uh, terminal A. And so we had to reconnect the ground wire for the body and the terminal small little wire that comes out down here to terminal A. So we had to reach back into the underneath these guys and reach back in there and connect it down there to terminal A, which wasn't too difficult and we were able to do with everything still on. So a little bit about how we wired the winch up. This is the ground where we sanded everything down and it goes down to the bottom of the winch. The bot the winch is down there. Sorry, it's super dark. But right here is the power line and we zip tied it to the hood latch bracket. It runs along the bottom there and then there's a gap in the fire or in the front um, right here, which is part of the cowl system. Um, we ran it through there and then that brings it right here in front of the battery, run it alongside of the battery and up to this Warren solenoid. On the back side of the solenoid, we go down and that's this big wire here. We run that up to the battery and that's that power and that's how we did the ground on the other side. There are a few little of those wires that we talked about earlier that are underneath here that run down to the bottom. Um, and yeah, and then the box that we attached is right here so it's easy access if the wireless doesn't work you can just pull that off and get to it right there i think that's a really sweet little setup that we were able to do super easy to get that attached and it ain't going anywhere it's in there pretty damn good once we have the wiring kind of set up um we're not going to run the switch right now because juan's going to get a switch pros or an s pod something later on so we're just going to leave it the way it is which is good uh, you're able to do that because there's no power going through everything. It's only going from the wire from the terminal to the solenoid. But we can jump them um, and essentially make it act like a switch is there. And you should be able to hear the solenoid click on to know that we're getting power. Yeah, buddy. Uh -oh. So we know the solenoid's working, it's getting power. The next test will be, Juan, do you have the remote? Yes, sir. Go out.
Turn it on. Go out. Oh, oh go boy. out. Keep going out. Now, if I let this go, we should stop it. Yes, sir. Three. Beautiful! That's a winch install. Thanks, Open Road, for donating this winch so we could do this awesome install. This thing's a 13,000 pound winch, it's a beast. It's a bit much for these Tacomas, but you never know who you're gonna pull out. So that's really cool. Uh, thanks for Tacoma Powered for bringing out their truck so we can do this install on it. If you have any questions about the install, please put it down in the description below. And like always, my friends, keep crawling.